Hey, what's up? It's Comic95, the Savior, and for this video, I am going to kind of be giving you guys some personal advice that has to do with myself. So, I want to have a real talk conversation with you guys, and I'm going to make two separate videos. I've honestly said this stuff a million times. There's no new information here, but I wanted to kind of, well, maybe there is some new information, kind of break it down a little bit more and use myself as an example, but also just be vaguely given normal advice. So if you are someone that's been subscribed to my channel for a long time and you've watched a lot of my content thoroughly all the way through, you've already like heard all of my crazy stories about bad things that I've done here, bad things that have happened to me here, etc. And not to make this like my video talking about why you should stay in Japan, but I want to specifically talk about the job aspect of working here. But before I get into that, I really want to speak on my own situation first because I'm just going to keep it real. I have a lot of people that happen to be a different race than I am, <clears throat> white people, that like to tell me, oh, well, you should do this, you should do that, this is a professional, you shouldn't do whatever. You know who you are. So I'm just going to go ahead and address it, but I wanted to make this kind of like an angry video initially, and then I thought, you know, instead of wasting my time arguing with you in the comments, why not just make a video addressing this? If you are someone like me, whether you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, whatever you happen to be, and you don't come from a family that has money, and or you come from an abusive background, you don't have help or support, you're not married, you don't come to Japan and jump into a sham marriage, living in Japan is hard, especially transitioning from being a student in Japan to working full time in Japan. I already made a separate video which you can watch in which I talk about the difficulties with switching from being a student to working in Japan because nobody told me how hard it was going to be to find an initial job to sponsor my first work visa. Japan really speaks out of both sides of its mouth. They want to have people that, you know, are experienced, that live and work here, but what they don't, and they don't want you to, you know, come here on a sham marriage or get into one. And they try to make it hard for you to, you know, go to immigration and get a spouse visa based off of a sham marriage. But at the same time, you get punished and penalized for not having a spouse visa when applying for jobs. In case you don't already know this, people on a spouse visa are typically preferred over those that are on work visas. The only visa that's better than having a spouse visa is a long-term residence visa. So spouse visas are essentially the holy grail, the golden ticket to residency in Japan because they don't require any special skills of you. You have men and women that didn't even finish high school that are working teaching jobs here solely based on the fact that they have a spouse visa. The other reality is, let's keep it real, Japanese jobs, they don't do reference checks and background checks, etc. 99% of the time. And with that said, it makes it super easy to get a job, lie about history and experience, etc. So if you didn't know, now you know. So my goal isn't to teach you to do bad things in that sense, but just to put that into perspective. If you don't have money and your visa is expiring and you don't have a lot of options, nobody's going to hire you, etc., you are going to eventually run out of money and you're going to find yourself in a difficult situation. Sometimes you might even be in a case like mine's where you don't even have enough money to go back to your home country. And the reality is, I mean, if you don't have money, how would you have money for a flight ticket and to move your stuff back to where you came from? And let's be real, we're all grown here. Anybody that has the ability to watch the internet and that's using YouTube, I'm pretty sure you have some other personal belongings no matter what country you come from and the thought of giving up your stuff doesn't sound ideal to you. So I understand that for a lot of people watching my stuff, it's like, oh, well, you shouldn't have done whatever or you shouldn't have asked for this, such as like pay advances, etc. But it's like, I said this to that girl in that comment, like closed mouths don't get fed. It's stupid to pretend and have pride and act like you don't need help when you do need it. It's really easy to talk down on other people and other situations when you've never been through it yourself and when you're not in that person's boat. I can almost guarantee and promise you if you were ever inside of my shoes and had my experience when applying for jobs, you would have done the same thing. So this video isn't to defend me, but rather to, I guess, open up your eyes and give you some perspective. A lot of you guys here, like most people, not hating on you, I wish I was you in that sense, you guys come from households where your parents might not be rich, but they might as well be, and they are rich in comparison to a lot of minorities. You have parents that are paying for your school, that are paying for your housing, that are buying your food, you're fat, <laughs> you have access to things that I do not have access to. I literally went months here and lost a ton of weight just because I didn't have any groceries. I was literally rationing out a can of Pringles that I had, you guys. I was eating spaghetti with no sauce, no nothing on it, just salt and pepper. It got that bad. And it was so tempting, honestly, to just steal food from my roommates. But I didn't do that. I didn't have support, family, friends, a husband. Everybody wants to message me now. <laughs> you know, a boyfriend at the time to help me out. I was alone. What am I supposed to do? 
I'm human and like most humans I'm not perfect I've mismanaged money I was young I was 20 I was 21 I'm still young I'm only 25 years old you guys I know for some of you watching my channel you're like 16 17 years old but the majority of my viewers are actually older than me they're like 25 to 35 years old according to YouTube at least so with that said yeah like you know when you don't have money you've gone a long time without working and the work that you have been doing has been going straight into you affording your rent and you know trying to pay off tuition etc anybody knows as a college student you're not dealing with a lot of money so even after you do get a job say you do get a job here you have to actually be able to pay your bills rent and everything else for typically with most jobs about two months and that's after you start working because most jobs in Japan do not pay you within the first month of you working let me repeat that again Americans your job does not pay you within the first month of you working. let's put this into perspective imagine you're working at McDonald's okay you left out of your abusive baby daddy's house or your mama's house or whatever you're on your own you have a place that you know the rent is cheap because it's in a bad area but you're only working part-time at McDonald's so you're not rich and balling yourself this rent is expensive for you imagine if you didn't get paid bi-weekly you didn't get paid twice a month you didn't get paid once a week anymore your check came once a month and not even during the first 30 days of you working you have to wait 60 days after you started working because you get paid for the work you did the month before okay now try doing that in a foreign country you see what my problem is you're expected to be able to get back and forth to work every day with no money to start off with you're expected to be able to get to interviews just in the hopes of landing a job and some of them might not even choose to hire you no credit card no mommy sending you hundreds of dollars no you know daddy's credit card type thing none of that type of stuff if you have parents to help you this isn't to bash you good for you but I'm trying to put it into perspective don't judge me or other people in my situation when you can't relate to it. you've never had to do what I've had to do and I'm not proud of what I've had to do I'm not proud of what I've done but I also try to be honest and transparent on my channel I can of course lie about this I can leave out information I didn't have to tell you about that I didn't have to mention my pay advance my point in those videos was to specifically talk about being blackmailed at work regardless of how bad of an employee you may have been regardless of what you might have done that might be deemed as unprofessional nothing ever justifies a company blackmailing you sharing your information or not paying you for work that you did and again try living in a foreign country not having a husband here not having you know a boyfriend to pay your stuff for you etc and even then cultural differences kind of make it where that's not really appropriate to ask either if you're not married so i'm not gonna drag myself into that so much it's not the whole purpose on this entire video but i wanted to start it off by talking about that there's a lot of perspective that goes into it if you are in need of something you can't have pride and be stupid and pretend like you don't need to try to look cool and good I've seen Japanese people do it. I actually read a story from another girl talking about that. Um, that she had a you know Japanese co-worker that was clearly struggling financially, wasn't eating anything for lunch, but had you know too much pride to ask somebody you know, if they could buy him a lunch or ask if he could borrow money. They just don't do that here. I'm not going to die and starve to death because I'm afraid to ask for help from my own employer. My employer, I'm making money for them. I'm the reason why they're in business. I'm being used with my image, my name, my face as a circus clown. In Japan, working here is like working for some other YouTube company like BuzzFeed, etc. When you sign a contract to work for these companies, you are not only their employee, you are their property. You're not allowed to work for another school legally. You're not allowed to even teach your own private English lessons. They want you to solely work for them. But then they don't pay you enough money. They underpay you. They don't sponsor your work visa. They don't give you housing. They don't pay you for at least a month, if not two months after you start. That's a lot, especially for somebody that's coming from nothing, that has nothing, and that was in a bad situation before. Good for you if you can't relate, but please don't crap on people because you can't relate to it. Great for you. I, I wish I had your parents. I wish I had your credit score. That's nice. But not everybody's in your situation, so please be understanding towards that. I also want to add on to that, which is the purpose in this video. You're really being played. I might just make a one part instead. You're really being played by these schools because a lot of you guys have it in your mind where you're so concerned about keeping the image of being a good employee, working the same job. And that is great. I'm not saying or encouraging people to quit, but I really want you to think about it. For some reason, when people come to Japan, I get it, it's Japanese culture that they don't normally quit jobs, but they put up with things they wouldn't do in their home country necessarily. At least some of you guys do online for you armchair, you know, doctors and armchair judges telling me what I should do. A lot of these jobs, 
they are underpaying you and they have you inside the mindset that you need to continue and work the duration of your contract because you signed a contract. But these same jobs, they can break that contract with you if they choose to fire you for any reason with or without warning. I've told the story infamous, you know, infamously a million times. The most shocking situation where I got fired from wasn't my part-time job at that black-owned restaurant in Tokyo. It was actually a teaching job I had in Aikai, a full-time teaching job. All I did was tell them that I had students in my class who I felt like the curriculum was too hard for them. They were being placed inside of a class based off of their age. I had a junior high student doing high school level, in high school level English and her comprehension skills were crap. We did a listening activity where it wasn't even me talking. It was a video recording, visual and subtitles. And she had a book in front of her and she couldn't understand. I literally had to give her the answers. She didn't know the difference between how are you and how old are you. I nicely explained it to my boss. I tell him about how it was hard to, you know, help the students in my class because I had some students that had a phonics book for homework and others that had the workbook that went together with, you know, the student book in class, which made no sense. Two totally different curriculum books. It's not even reinforced what we learned in class for some of them. How am I supposed to assign homework? Made him mad. He didn't tell me or show it then. I came back the next day. He told me that he was letting me go. And that was going to be the end of me working there. And he waited until I finished my shift to do so. Now that was bogus. Those are the type of situations that I've been in here. These same employees that you're busy trying to kiss their butt. And trying to look like a good employee. And are worried about looking bad to everybody else. They'll let you go in a heartbeat. They're not even paying you what you're worth. For the majority of you, I won't lie, you're not worth much money. A lot of you guys are here on spouse visas. You're here on student visas working part-time. Okay, you don't have any work experience, so you're actually being overpaid because you would not be getting no $20 or $30 an hour in the U.S. But for those of us that do, I'm accepting being paid the same amount as some clown who just got married to some Japanese chick that's 30 years his senior because he wanted to live in Japan because he has yellow fever or something. That's not fair to me. But the same employer who won't pay me what I'm worth based off of my experience, based off of my education, wants me to be okay with putting up with them. You don't want to sponsor my visa from the start. And that's a catch-22 as well. You want somebody else to have already sponsored my visa. And then maybe after staying with you for a year, if you choose to keep me on board, you'll sponsor it next time. But then you also get judged for quitting your job. Because so, why did you leave your employer? Why didn't you sign a new contract? You can't win because also if you've only worked one job and you move on to the next one, you don't have a lot of work experience. You're not worth it. You're not valuable. You're not experienced in your employer's eyes. Do you see how this is an endless cycle? It's a game. And a lot of you guys are falling for it. So it's easy to look down on somebody like me. But let me also add this to it as well. Going back to your McDonald's job. All retail places in the U.S., especially big chain places like McDonald's, Starbucks, Walmart, Target. Employees do not even stay there for a year. Not even six months. Employees normally work those jobs for less than three months and they quit Amazon. Work for a day, two days, one week, two weeks, one month. Gone. Almost everyone you got hired with is gone. They quit. Same reason. Underpaid, overworked, undervalued. Teaching does require skill. It does require experience. It does require talent. It requires professionalism and it does require a license and a degree. And with that being said, it's insulting. I've literally had jobs try to lowball me and pay me $2,400 a month for doing full time work where you are more qualified than the managers there. But it's just what they pay everyone. But then these same places are concerned about you quitting your job. 
They overcharge you for company housing. Don't want to sponsor your visa. Don't want to pay you what you're worth. But then try to manipulate, bully, persuade you into feeling like you're a bad person for quitting their company should they treat you bad. Should you find a place that pays more. You shouldn't want to be paid more. You should be happy to work for us. Honor your contract. What about the kids? What about me? You only have one life. Your employer is paying you your garbage salary because teaching English in Japan is a business. They don't care about your life. They don't care about you. Most schools don't. There are some good schools that maybe do. They don't care about what you think you're worth. They don't care about what you are worth. They care about profit. They can replace you in a heartbeat and they will. They don't care about your experience. They care about it because they want to use it to make money, but they don't care about what type of teacher you truly are. They don't care what the kids learn. Because at the end of the day, again, it's a business. As long as students are enrolling and parents are happy and they're staying and paying money, they're okay. I refuse to stay at a company that doesn't value me as an employee, that treats me like crap, that doesn't pay me anything. And while it might look crazy and unprofessional, whatever to you, I bring it back to how things are in my home country. People know their value. They don't even have degrees, don't have college educations, don't even have high school diplomas. They quit jobs. Knowing that they don't have a lot of job options to begin with. Because more than likely, if you're working a retail job in the U.S., it's because you don't have a college education. You're either a student, or you dropped out, or just decided not to go to college, or you dropped out of high school, you know, junior high school, elementary school, whatever. There's only so many retail places you can work at in your city. Why do you still quit these jobs? The veterans on that job have normally only been there for somewhere between six months to a year. And the really, really old workers there... The 15, 20 year people, they're old ladies with a sick or deceased husband or something. People don't make careers out of it. Why are you letting companies that are lowballing you force you into making a career out of it? If you've been living in Japan for any length of time or just scouring their job listings from abroad, you would know that you see jobs all the time that are listed for much higher than where you are working. Your job is only paying you 2700 or $2,500, $2,000 a month, $1,800. You see jobs paying as high as $6,000 a month, $5,000, or even $3,000. Why are you letting somebody trick you into accepting this low salary? Do you not realize that if you were to quit this job and try to apply for another job because now you have work experience, you have history, you've grown as a teacher, you've grown as a person, you will get more money? It's a scam. So many people don't do that. They get comfortable where they are. They stay where they are. They don't change. They don't move stages. They don't change jobs. And I won't lie. I've had jobs that I really, really liked here. And I've said this to you guys before. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have quit on my own. But I'm grateful to God that I've had that push to quit. Or that I have been fired. Because had those things not happened, I probably would have stayed comfortable where I was. Just because I was like you. I wanted to look good in other people's eyes. I didn't want to have to tell my mom and dad, oh, I quit my job again. Or come on YouTube and tell you guys. Because I try to be honest here. I make journal videos. And I want to let you guys know what's going on in my life. I know that people are going to judge me. I know my family is going to judge me. But it always pays off in the end. I said it before. But in the end, every time I've done it, get a higher paying job. More work experience. Better position. Better apartment. Better relationship even. Why settle? Don't do that to yourself. And don't let other foreigners who don't live here and or that do live here but have their husband's money, daddy's money, their wife's business to fall back onto, tell you what you should do. Tell you what they would do. It's easy to speak on stuff when it doesn't, you know, relate to you. It has nothing to do with you. If you've never gone without support, never gone without money, never had to really live on your own, it's easy to say, well, just do this, just do whatever. Most of y'all living here, you're not even paying your own rent. You have student loans. Your mom and dad is paying for it. Your boyfriend is. Your husband is. Most of the foreigners, do you know, get married within a year or two of coming to Japan for that very reason? They get married. Problem solved. You don't have to worry about that because now you're not alone anymore. You don't have money. Your spouse got you. You want to know what else people do? They quit. That is why the turnover rate is so high. The difference between me and them and why it seems like I'm taboo for saying this, nobody talks about their business on YouTube for obvious reasons. It's dangerous. It can stop you from getting another job. 
You're putting your personal business out there to total strangers that don't know you. In exchange for some pocket change from ads, basically. It's dangerous and it's scary. And the reality is most foreigners leave Japan. When they quit their job, they leave the country. The turnover rate is high. I'm not the only person to quit. Even the jobs that I've absolutely loved here, the longest time I've ever met a teacher that's been working at any given company has always been three years. If they are not the manager. Most schools, all of the teachers have been there for one, two years. They quit after that. They get tired of Japan and go back to their home country. It's stressful here. The pay is low here. And even the little measly five, six thousand dollar salary, that's a starting teacher salary in Chicago. I should be getting paid more than that now. In Japan, you have to factor in sexism, ageism. I'm 25, and do you know that during my job searching, people have been asking me, oh, so when do you plan to get married? Do you plan on having kids anytime? Like, they don't want to pay for maternity leave. And I'm like, okay. So once again, part of being property and not an employee. These companies don't care about you. They care about their business. This job that I interviewed for that asked me those questions, the pay was only $2,400, which means that once I actually get paid, my check will be more like $2,000 or $1,900 after they take out taxes, take out my pension, take out my health insurance. After doing a month work of 40 hour you know, weeks, 40 hour weeks for a crappy company at a Japanese kindergarten. Not even international school, Japanese kindergarten. I'm supposed to accept $1,900 in exchange for giving up my ability to ever have children, basically. Because even although I am of childbearing age, and my time is coming to an end, in which I will start having difficulty with conceiving, I'm supposed to be okay with giving up my fertility for a $1,900 check. I shouldn't want to get married. I shouldn't want to have kids. I should just want to teach for your company. And anything besides that makes me selfish. Because should I get pregnant? You are going to pressure me to quit my job. You want female teachers though. You want young female teachers in particular. They don't want old ladies. And you want native English speakers in particular. We are of more value than European girls that speak other languages, etc. If you are European and you are not from the UK, you are not from Australia, you are not desired here. No matter how cute you might be, schools will hire you. But it's harder to get a higher paying position unless you happen to know someone. And with that said, you would think, okay, I'm doing you a favor for your school. And they'll let you know. They'll be super happy. Oh, my God, your resume is so nice. You have all this experience, all these certifications. Oh, but you're 25. You're so cute. When are you going to get married? Oh, you're getting married this year. Have you thought about when you plan to have children? I mean, we're just hoping it's not within the next year or so because, you know, we don't want you to go on maternity leave. Just flat out bluntly say that type of stuff. Your employer don't care about you. They care about themselves. They'll tell you that they're concerned about hiring you because of the distance, because they don't want you to quit. If you're worried about your teachers quitting because of all of these different reasons, because you've been burned in the past, has it ever crossed your mind? Maybe your employees, your teachers are quitting because they're not being treated fairly. They're not being paid enough. They're not valued. They're not given enough freedom to do what they want outside of work. They're not given enough vacation days. Your solution is to blame the employee, to blame the teacher, but not the school. It's nothing that the school is doing. It's not because you want the foreign staff to worship the Japanese staff. No, no, no. It's just because foreigners have bad work ethic. They're used to getting away with abusing, manipulating, and taking advantage of Japanese staff. Because that's how this country works. I'm just going to keep it real with you. Big problem with Japan is the work life here. It's not the crazy long work hours that you see on YouTube because that's not how people work here. But they do abuse the crap out of you mentally. They make you feel like you are a bad person if you want anything good for yourself. You're selfish. When I quit my last job, that's exactly what they did. I'm not going to lie. I should have left that job more professionally. But when I left, they said, what about the kids? And I, as I just said, what about me? 
What about me? You're not willing to give me the work environment that I want. You're not willing to give me the freedom that I want. You're not willing to give me the salary that I want. Oh, but yes, I should care so much about these kids. If they had a problem with me, they would fire me in a heartbeat. They wouldn't think twice about it. But for me, I don't have the right to complain. I don't have the right to want change. I don't have the right to anything. I should be grateful that they're throwing me a little bit of money to help me forget about my dreams. Why as a teacher do you want to work at a company that requires you to work in shifts? That's not what normal teachers do, especially when you're a professional. If you're someone that came here on a spouse visa, you know, student, whatever, I'm going to be real. You ain't really got the right, you know, the right to complain about that. Because again, you're not qualified for this job. But as someone that does have those qualifications, that does have that experience, that is the age, that is, you know, from the country of origin, has the accent that you desire. I don't want to be working a job that's not paying me based off of my experience. And I don't even have a set schedule. I don't know what my lunch is going to be. I don't know what class I'm going to be in. I don't know what hours I'm going to work. Who wants that? What grown person wants to work in shifts that's not in a medical field? And even then, a lot of medical workers do have set shifts for their only work in the morning, only work at night, whatever. And it's normally based off of what they want and what works around their schedule. I don't want that. And sure, I signed up for the job. I interviewed for it. But because of that, I also have the right to quit when I'm ready to. You want to keep your teachers? You want to keep me? Pay me what I'm worth. Listen to me. Do what I'm asking you to do. Because ultimately, whatever I'm asking for is a drop in the bucket for what you could be doing. These schools are making millions of dollars a year. They don't care about you. Be a slave. Kiss butt. Do what you want to do. But just know you only have one life to live. And you're wasting it on a company that doesn't, inval- that doesn't value you. That doesn't see you as an employee. You are a slave to them. And one day, like a lot of people here, I work with people like it that are, you know, 35, 36 years old, just now got married. And still trying to dance around the topic of when they can, you know, get some time off and, you know, take maternity leave. They want to plan for a family. Struggling with fertility treatments, paying $30,000 a year down the drain because IVF ain't work for you. You got tricked. You wasted your years here. I do not want to be you. So if not being you means forever running around, switching from job to job, getting clowned for doing so, having bad experiences, that's fine. My resume looks beautiful. My life experiences have been beautiful. And it's always paid off for me in the end. I'm able to give this advice to you guys because I've been in that position before. I've been at bad jobs. I was trying to muscle through and stay there and be like, I can take it. I can do this. I've been fired when I didn't want to be. And like I said, it always ended up paying off in the end because I ended up with something better. Even when it didn't happen right away, like right now, the end result is always beautiful and it's always worth it. You guys are literally staying at a good job for no reason. What are you getting out of it? Other than, of course, you have the security of getting that paycheck. These dispatch companies be tricking y'all. They give you a low-ass salary. And they say we give you a yearly raise. Okay, but if I just worked for another company that pays more off the bat and gives a yearly raise, I'd be making even more, have a better work environment, better work hours, better work conditions. What? And then play mind games with you. I'm an IB teacher. I applied for a grape seed program who pretended to be an IB school, switched back and forth. And then when I tried to negotiate my salary, give me the bare minimum bottom salary that they offer. After asking for all my certificates, my resume, asking me for photos, which normal people don't even have photos of them and their kids because most schools don't do that. But I worked at a different kind of company that did. You had me do all of that just to give me the lowest salary possible? $1,900? And then these same companies will get mad at you be ready to call immigration on you for quitting a job because you quit. What grown person wants to make $1,900 a month? As a professional, you got to be out of your mind. But they don't see it that way. They're so brainwashed, whether they're foreigner or Japanese. They are so used, excuse me for spitting, they're so used to taking advantage of you and people going along with it. And their mind is like, hey, you used us for visa sponsorship. Hey, you took advantage of us. Maybe you took advantage or tried to take advantage of me. You want to underpay and overwork me and bully and manipulate me to stay in your crappy company. People want to know, why do you want to work at our school? None of us want to work at your school. We want money. We want to live in Japan because we like this country. Your school is trash. 
We need a job. We need income. A lot of these schools ain't. But we do what we have to do. That's the truth. And they know that. They know what's competitive in Tokyo and Osaka and Kyoto. It's not fair. We do what we have to do. A lot of you all are stuck working miserable jobs, miserable environments, etc. And you feel trapped. And these companies help make you feel trapped after you sign that contract. You have fun making your $2,500 a month. You have fun making your $2,800 a month after you've been teaching in Japan for 5, 10 years. I'm not joining you. Sorry. Sometimes it is worth it to go without a job for some time. If that means getting a better, higher paying one, better location, better living situation. Just like being single. Sometimes it's worth it to be single for a while. To find somebody that treats you better. You're a woman, a man that's more financially stable, has a better career, makes more money. Taller. More handsome. Whatever. Sometimes it's worth it to wait for the right one. Wait for the right time. Wait for the right job. Everything in your life does not have to be perfect. That is exactly why you do not see me over here running around on YouTube. I don't make videos with guys that I date. I don't make videos with any time somebody gives me a little bit of their attention. I'm single right now as of the making of this video. I don't know whether I'll be in a relationship by the time it gets posted. But I can tell you right now, do I enjoy being single? Absolutely not. It sucks. <laughs> I miss having a boyfriend. I miss going on dates. I miss sleeping together. I miss sex. I can keep it real with you guys. I want to have a family. I want to get married. And I thought I was going to do it this year. Really, last year. But it's okay. I would rather wait for the right person than screw up with the wrong person. I've had close calls. <laughs> My patrons know. But I'm grateful that I'm not in that situation. Because waiting is always worth it. It is worth it to wait for a better person than to force something with a bad person or the wrong person. It is better to wait for a good job than to force something with a bad job. You can work a job temporarily, but by temporary, we keeping it under six months. I'm not giving away a year, two years, three years, five years of my life to prove a point to who? People that don't know me, that don't like me, that don't care about me, a job that doesn't value me, that doesn't care about me. If I got cancer and needed to be hospitalized, the first thing on their mind is, do you have a replacement teacher? One of my black friends just went to the hospital to get some surgery done. She has, I forgot what it was, an endometriosis, or whatever that stuff is called. I can't remember the name of it. Sorry for being ignorant. Do you know what her job said? Her job was my old job, my dad. They said to her, well, who's going to take over for summer school? We're short staff for teachers because X, Y, and Z went to Thailand. You're mad at your black teacher for having problems with her ovaries. You're not mad at your white staff for going on vacation to Thailand unnecessarily in the middle of a pandemic. That makes total sense. There you go. Prime example. They don't care about you. It's all about business. They're not worried about whether you recover. They're not worried about your body. They're worried about who's going to teach, who's going to stop us from losing money. You are not a family. Don't be fooled by them. You are a slave. You are a clown. You are a jester. Your image belongs to the school. You can work side jobs or whatever, but you're doing it under the table. Because more than likely, unless you are working several part-time jobs, if you have a full-time employer that's sponsoring your visa, you are not allowed to legally work any other side job, including by yourself, doing freelance lessons legally, according to your contract. By immigration standards, no, you can do whatever you want to. But by your school, you're not supposed to do that. It's abusive. It's manipulative. Imagine if you're working a job at McDonald's and they said... Because you're working for us, you're not allowed to work for anybody else. Not just a competitor, but no other fast food place. No other retail place. Even if it's Walmart, which is completely unrelated to McDonald's. In fact, McDonald's is inside of some big Walmarts in Texas, I know. They don't care. Imagine. You're not going to pay me more money for keeping my image while you're at school. But you're going to control me. It's like having an abusive spouse or abusive boyfriend or husband. F boys do it all the time. I'll make a video on that later too. You don't want to be my boyfriend. You don't want to be my husband. You don't want to date me. But you want me to keep, you know, my private areas dedicated to you. I shouldn't see another man. I shouldn't sleep with another man. You don't want to, you know, commit to me. But you want me to act like I'm committed to you. What? Your job is doing the same thing. They are fucking you over. 
and you buying it. You letting them do it. You're bending over for them every time. Man, woman, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, whatever you happen to be, you are being played. So have fun. Judge people like me for being unstable, crazy, in the wrong, whatever you want to call it. I'm living my life and I'm not wasting years of it on somebody that doesn't care about me. I'm not wasting years of it destroying my mental health. I want to be happy when I go to work. I don't care how many times I have to quit jobs, change jobs, whatever. If it's keeping me sane and happy, I will do it again. So that's it. I just want to give you guys some perspective. Seems crazy and unreasonable. Like, why do you keep quitting your job? Why do you do whatever? Why don't you manage your money? Easy to say when you are not in that person's position. Easy to say when you're not behind on bills. Easy to say when you're not the one having to pay $3,000 up front to move into a place, having to lie about having a job that you don't have because you need a job to get a place, but you can't get a place without a job. You can't get money without a job. Having to go two, three months without having any salary because you were looking for a job. Then once you start a job, you need money to commute to the job. There's so much stuff you all just don't understand. Because you're not in Japan, or if you are here, you got mommy and daddy helping you out, you got your spouse helping you out, your sugar daddy helping you out, your friends helping you out. When you're not in that position, it's easy for you to say, easy for you to judge. I have pride. It hurts me to ask for help too. But I will not refuse to ask for help when I need it. If I need help, if I need support, I will do what I have to do to get it. You can judge me, clown me, whatever, and that's fine. I might look stupid and crazy to you, but I'd rather look stupid and crazy for asking for help than looking stupid and crazy and being homeless because I didn't ask for it, than being out on the street. I don't want to talk about this in this video and I'll make another one, but I'll be honest with you guys. At one point, I actually considered doing adult work, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Because I had no money. And I'm glad that I did not choose to stay on that path. It's not only illegal, it's dangerous, it's bad for you, it's humiliating and embarrassing. And especially being in a foreign country. I would much rather ask my employer for a pay advance than suck some old man's you know what for a few hundred dollars. Easier work can make more money much faster, especially when you look as good as I do. <laughs> but I'm going to keep it real with you. People will judge you no matter what you do. You're judging me for quitting my job. You're judging me for doing whatever. You're judging me for asking for help when I need it. For my employer, who's... I'm just asking for money. You're going to pay me anyway a month from now based on my contract. But then the same people also judge you if you try to get your money through an illegal or sexual or drug-related means. That's why I don't listen to you all. I do what I have to do because I know my situation. That's it. I'm done with this video. I hope I opened up your eyes, gave you some perspective. Please be respectful towards me and other people that you see here going through challenges and struggles. I used to be one of those people that felt like, girl, like, see posts by people like, why are you always quitting your job? Why are you always in help? Why are you always asking for money? I'm not justifying everybody because there are most certainly lots of people here trying to scam and just, you know, e-begging. I don't do that. I don't e-beg. <laughs> but... If I'm working for an employer, I don't have money. I'm spending money on your students. I'm spending money to commute to work, to make my classroom better, to make the parents and students happy. The least you can do is give me a couple hundred dollars to help me get back and forth to work. You got my passport. You got my information. I'm not going nowhere. You're giving me a paycheck. Why would I? So... <sighs> that's it. I'm done with this video. Sorry I had to say it. Sorry for being ranty. Sorry for making it so long, but it needed to be said. And I hope that I opened up your eyes and helped you guys realize how insensitive you're being when you call yourselves looking down or giving advice to me, etc. Like, think about your think about yourself or think about your home country. I highly doubt that all of you all have worked the same job since you started working. Most of you have quit jobs several times or at least a few times. Nobody works at McDonald's or Walmart for the rest of their lives after they start working or for even three years or one year or whatever because they signed a contract saying they were going to be an employee there. Who would sign a contract in Japan as an American native English speaker with a bachelor's degree in experience for a $2,400 job and honor the contract for one, three, or five years of their life just because they asked them to? Your employer want to keep you, they can pay you more money. If they're not going to do it, leave. They're not treating you right, leave. Just like your relationship. 
That's, you wouldn't recommend or suggest to a woman, oh, stay with that guy. He's going to marry you. It doesn't matter if he's beating and abusing you. At least you're going to get a ring on your finger. It doesn't matter if he's cheating on you. At least you could say you're married. If you have that low standards and low self-esteem, then you go right ahead. But that ain't going to be me. Absolutely not. Do what you want to do, but that's not going to be me, girl. So I'm done. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you want to share your own experience, give your own two cents, argue with me, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and give me a like. As always, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Comic95. You can add me on Snapchat at Comic the Savior and like my Facebook page at Comic95 um, the Savior on Facebook. And I believe it's all my social media. I always forget my handles. <laughs> so you can also read my blog for more advice on dating, work, and living in Japan. And of course, go to my home channel and check out my playlist there. I have videos on pretty much every topic from journals, talking about myself, to giving work and dating advice online here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will see you soon. I hope you'll watch another video. Bye.